At this point, I want to put together two things that you already understand individually, but together might hurt your head a little. Previously, we looked at how the order of modifiers matters. So, if you wrote code like this, button, tap me, do nothing, dot background, color dot blue, dot frame, width 200, height 200, dot foreground color, dot white, then the result would look different if we swap the modifier order around to have background come after the frame. This is because if we color the background before adjusting the frame, only the original space is colored rather than the expanded space. If you recall, the underlying reason for this is the way SwiftUI wraps views with modifiers, allowing us to apply the same modifier multiple times. We repeated background and padding several times to create a striped border effect. That's concept one. Modifier order matters because SwiftUI wraps views with modifiers in the order they are applied. Concept two is that we can apply an animation modifier to a view in order to have it implicitly animate changes. To demonstrate this, we could modify our button code so it shows different colors depending on some state. First, we define the state. At state, private var, enabled equals false. We can toggle that between true and false inside our button's action. Self dot enabled dot toggle. Then we can use a conditional value inside the background modifier so the button's either blue or red. Dot background enabled question mark color dot blue or color dot red. Finally, we add the animation modifier to the button to make those changes animate. Dot animation dot default. If you run the code, you'll see that tapping the button animates its color between blue and red. So, order modifier matters, and we can attach one modifier several times to a view. And we can cause implicit animations to occur with the animation modifier. All clear so far? Okay, right. Brace yourself, because this might hurt. You can attach the animation modifier several times, and the order in which you use it matters. To demonstrate this, I'd like you to add this modifier to your button after all the other modifiers. Dot clip shape, rounded rectangle, corner radius, enabled question mark, 60 colon zero. That will cause the button to move between a square and a rounded rectangle depending on the state of the enabled Boolean. When you run the program, you'll see that tapping the button causes it to animate between red and blue, but jump between square and rounded rectangle, that part doesn't animate. Hopefully you can see where we're going next. I'd like you to move the clip shape modifier before the animation, like this. And now, when you run the code, both the background color and clip shape animate together. So the order in which you apply animations matters. Only changes that occur before the animation modifier get animated. Now for the fun part. If we apply multiple animation modifiers, each one controls everything before it up to the next animation. This allows us to animate state changes in all sorts of different ways rather than uniformly for all properties. For example, we could make the color change happen with the default animation, but use an interpolating spring for the clip shape. So I'll move animation default up here and add .animation .interpolating spring stiffness 10 damping 1. You can have as many animation modifiers as you need to construct your design, which lets us split one state change into as many segments as we need. For even more control, it's possible to disable animations entirely by passing nil to the modifier. For example, you might want the color change to happen immediately, but the clip shape to retain its animation, in which case you'd write this. Dot animation nil. That kind of control wouldn't be possible without multiple animation modifiers. If you tried to move background after the animation, you'd find that it would just undo the work of clip shape. 